Welcome to another Gutless Method video. This is the goal. So right now we're just skinning the hide back off these quarters so we can take the quarters off and then get to the back straps and tenderloins. You start on the back of the leg and you follow that ridge up on the back leg here and on the front leg. Want to keep as much hair as you can out of the picture. Now and try to connect the back leg to the front. Leg cuts, stay out of the guts. But try to keep the hair off again. Nasty stuff going on in their glands back here. So if you, underneath, you don't want to touch any of that or touch meat with it. So we usually try to cut that off. I'm trying not to touch any of this. He's talking about these glands here on the back of the legs. They stink when they're rutting like this. That's why his legs are all wet, all smutty. So it's the pee and the gland scent mixing. That's what the ladies like. There's a joint, a natural joint right here in the leg where we'll break this off. And I usually can tell where it is by, there's these two bumps and you cut in between those. Most people cut too high. But then there's a big tendon back here that's used for hanging, um, but it's considerably down below that. So then we cut the hair around the leg down below that, that joint, so. And like I said, we'll cut that once we get done skinning, just because it's nicer to have a handle to hold on to. And then we'll just continue skinning up that leg and skin it up over the back. So we need to leave evidence of sex attached. So typically what that is, if the head is removed, it's the balls. So I'm gonna split up between those balls and keep one attached to each hind quarter. But this is also another spot where there's a lot of nasty stink coming from. So we try to skin all that off. Now we've got it for the most part skinned all the way back and Once we get finished with that, we'll start taking these quarters off. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut, follow this natural crease um, down to his pelvis and to his hip socket. And then we'll cut through at the hip socket and that's that will release this quarter from the carcass. What's really nice is if you have a partner, someone to hold these legs for you as you cut and they can pull and turn it whatever angle you need as you go. It's a lot harder when you're all by yourself and you're doing it. The bleeder. Most of the time, you don't deal with a whole lot of blood, but today we have a bleeder. So right here is that socket, ball and socket point. And we just kept working down until we hit that. And we'll just continue cutting around through that. And around the pin bone, <laughs> which we don't know what that is. Everything's a pin bone. <laughs> Once we get this far on the leg, if you have a second guy, 
you have them get the game bag ready and get it all open. You want as less dirt and grime as you can on the meat. So before he cuts the last strings, get her open and ready to catch. Not the worst. Gotta be ready. Okay. You take it, put it in some grass somewhere. Nicely. And just like that, we're on to the next one. Now these front shoulders come off a lot easier. It's all, there are no pin bones on the front shoulder. There's my bullet. There's a bullet. Good shot, Dad. Thank you, son. <laughs> so I told you about cutting these back legs. There's two bumps. It's significantly down from this. A lot of people think it's right here, but you end up cutting nothing except for this tendon loose. So you gotta get right below there and you can feel it on both sides. So you just cut through the middle of those. There we go. Something's coming apart. That's going to lighten your load. And it's going to keep all that stink on those back legs away from the meat. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, there's a bunch of neck meat, which we'll get eventually here, but we want to um, cut down along this backbone and you can feel it with your fingers and you want to do this after you cut off the front shoulder so I cut way up the neck which is further than I need to the back strap actually is underneath this layer the way down to here <clears throat> it goes down to the ribs so we'll cut on the way down and we'll cut along that that bone the correct side of it it's a lot like flaying a fish sort of it's like flaying a deer A lot of these tender cuts come off without much knife. Back strap. Now we'll flip that deer over and we'll do the exact opposite on the other side. And now we got the second side off. We spared you that side for the sake of repetition. Uh, now we're gonna go in and get the tenderloin here. So the tenderloin, there's a kind of a ribby backbone without ribs here. And then here's the ribs, but that tenderloin lives right underneath this section. And so we kind of try to roll it and do the, um, whichever one is poking up first, because the guts tend to have gravity down the other way a little bit. But you can see that's, that's tenderloin right there. And you can actually work a lot of it out with your fingers. 
just got to be careful not to get guts and if I were if this were a gut shot animal I probably would not even attempt this just because those gut juices have been in the insides of the animal and these tenderloins really have the name tenderloin because they are so tender you can just kind of peel them off with your hand in there I tend to I like to say massage massage therapy At that that is the best piece of meat that's basically it now we're just kind of trying to get the head off which there's really no rhyme or reason that we've found to do that besides just chop it off we're trying to cut as much of it off and we're just gonna leave his lower jaw probably and skin as much off now while he's warm because when we go to clean the head later it's going to be easier for us. That's the only tip we really have for that. And that's pretty much a wrap. Quick and easy. Puts it into pieces for you so you can pack it out. And a deer like this, one guy can do pretty easily. Um, packing it all out himself. So, thanks for tuning in. And, um, come back next time. Out. We don't have to go very far.